I got it. Okay, we're recording now, everyone. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start because we only have 30 minutes. And the title of my presentation today is What to Expect When You Are Expecting an Adoption. And our proportion of that is foundations. I got one smile. I need a couple more there. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie. So um, our learning intentions are, I'm learning the basics for the foundation block to understand why 95% has been adopted and what components I'll be receiving to help me teach for the school year of 22-23. And you'll know you learned it successfully if you have questions from your um, colleagues and your colleagues ask you and you can, um, you can ask, you know, basically let them know what, what you know about it. So we're going to talk a little bit about the 95% core format. I have some samples here. So in the camera, if you can see, this is a manual, a teacher manual that you'll get. And um, in this teacher manual, um, the lesson is 20 to 40 minutes daily. Um, it's We're shooting for that at some point, teachers can get it streamlined down to 30 minutes. And so your foundations block will stay approximately 30 minutes. If you're um, for any fourth through fifth grade teachers here today, it doesn't look like anyone said yay, turn on. So if you're fourth and fifth, yours will be slightly different and it will have more like 15 to 20 minutes for your block. Every bit of these lessons contain a phonological component, a phonics component. It comes with a decodable. The spelling words are in embedded into the program and there's a small amount of comprehension but it's really just like what was the character what was the problem how did they solve it so the comprehension is really more about did you even know you were comprehending and not really deep comprehension and they all come with the scope and sequence that we'll be following that's one of my common questions will we follow the scope and sequence of 95 and the answer is yes we will be following that scope and sequence. So before that, so because of that, we'll be removing from wonders any phonological components, any phonics that's taught in there. The decodable will be optional because um, we're going to you're going to have the decodables and you can throw those into a practice station or align them to the skill and use them out of order, but it's not mandatory that you use it. It's not mandatory in K3 that you use the spelling words, but in 4-5, you will be using the spelling words. Every teacher will get a set of sound spelling cards in both Wonders and in um, 95%. So you'll have those components together. And then the ECRI will not be used anymore because our ECRI was aligned to Reading Street. And we, because we have 95, we just won't need it. And so then wonders will have their own scope and sequence for comprehension. And that's the scope and sequence we'll use for comprehension and be using the 95 um, foundation scope and sequence. So this is what you will get for all of them. This is a first grade example. Everyone will get student workbooks. This is the second grade student workbook that I have in my hand. And then we also have the picture of the first grade Every student gets three volumes of those for the year. Um, and those items are interactive books, meaning they look like um, work pages, but a student can't do them on their own. They would have to have a teacher with like an interactive notebook. You get sound spelling maps, and I have um, those here for you to look at as well. So you'll get all of those mats and components together. I don't know where my sound spelling mats went on my messy desk. And here's an example of the sound spelling cards right here. Um, each teacher will get, uh, kindergarten will get their send, sound spelling cards. Um, first grade will get sound, their sound spelling cards. Second grade will get first and seconds. Third grade will get first, second, and third grade sound spelling cards to be able to do that. And we also have that I skipped the manipulative kit that comes for every student. When you get that manipulative kit and you see that here on the screen, 
every student gets their little chips that they have and you'll get your mats. So when you get the kit, it, there's a, a piece that tells you what's in the kit. There's chips for the kids. You don't have to cut them out. They punch out very easily. So here, if I um, take this, I can just uh, push it gently and it just pops right out. So they're very easy. You almost touch them and they fall out. They're color coded for vowels and affixes. They have the mats for you to use also that are all printed. And the best part of all, you don't even have to buy baggies for the student. It comes with a big baggie for them to store it all. So the only thing a teacher has to do to prep is really to um, put together those kits, meaning you put um, together the little chips and punch those out. But if you had, you know, a parent volunteer or somebody you could have them do that. It would probably only take about 30 minutes or so to do to put those kits together for your classroom. If you are a second grade teacher, you get four volumes of the student workbooks and third grade as well. The other thing that the teachers get is what they call an HTML file presentation. So we have a lot of teachers who use slide decks to teach from and those slide decks are already made for you. And so you get a key code, they're all ready. Um, they, have a nice, um, they have a nice little um, way that you can look at them. And I have an example of that in my other um, example here, if I can pull it up. Oops, I wasn't this, I just showed it to you, Leanne, didn't I? I will find the example when we talk in a minute. Um, so here's where you'll get them. If you've been on the 95% group store, there's a place here called login. You'll have a key code on the inside of the book. So your unit manual number one will come with a key code. And that key code right there is what you will use to, um, is what you will use to register your product. There'll be a separate key code for your HTML files. You get two key codes and that will give you all the resources that you have and you'll use this login screen to be able to go there. You also have um, an explicit structured literacy routine that aligns to the letters uh, routine. So I'm going to upload in the chat um, here for you. Uh, the chat. I'm going to upload in the chat in here for you the um, letters file for the routine. So here is an example of a phonics lesson. You'll be glad that I upload it in there. Why does it take so long whenever you're um, with everyone? Okay, here, here it comes to you. So this lesson plan, and you can see it here on my um, screen, this lesson plan right here, um, it, it follows the exact lesson plan that you've seen. You'll be, if you haven't been to letters unit three yet, you will be seeing the letters lesson plan and you should have, should be seeing that as you go through unit three and here, is everything that is in this lesson that is aligned. So this goes to a sample lesson that is number 17 from first grade. And first grade lesson number 17, you can download from their website as a free download. And um, I can also put that in the Canyons U for you to see because it exactly aligns to what you're learning in letters. So you have the explicit literacy, the teaching reading, you have 20 to 30 minutes. It's whole class because it's tier one, teacher directed and with the presentation file. This is the scope and sequence that we'll be following for all of the grade levels. You have the sound spelling cards come with a um, spelling. It tells you little like mnemonics like it, it, itch. And then it also has on the back of that sound spelling card, 
the, le the formation of the mouth, uh, how you should articulate it, and what other pattern words you can use for that, which is something that is really nice. So here is an example of a movie showing that. I'm going to put that up to 940, so if you'll give me a second to get it there. Card is going to show a keyword that is associated with the sound, while the back of the card is going to provide information related to the articulation of the sound and how the mouth moves as it says the sound. The pictures uh, that you see up here are for short I itch or long I ice. We know that um, these cards are primarily used to teach the sounds in kindergarten where they can be held up during instruction as you teach each letter sound and then post it. But they also serve as a fabulous reference guide for first grade students to remind them of the keywords and the letter sound association. So um, that is where the sound spelling cards on their um, file, they, they have it K1, uh, but we have bought for every teacher the sets K through three, like I stated before. So you all have them so you can use them in during um, small group time for kids who have the concept and for kids who don't. Here's an example of a teacher lesson. This is from first grade. Uh, a lesson lasts in a five-day sequence. We will be asking you to use the I do, we do, you do, because it's built in there for that. Each lesson is five days and the fifth day cannot be skipped. So we'll be thinking, giving you a range of time to do so many lessons because you cannot think anymore in the um, sequence of Monday to Friday and then compacting if you had like a, uh, you know, the President's Day is off. So now I only have four days, Tuesday to Friday. You have to do day five because it's the application lesson. So you'll be cycling around and perhaps doing a day five, say on a Monday, or you might be doing a day five on a Tuesday, depending on how the lesson goes. Each of these has clear, easy to read instructions. You say the black, the kid or the example, or what should be responded is in the blue. This is a picture here of what you are seeing on the HTML file or the slide deck where the chips will be pushing up and animated and showing what the kids should be doing. Then the kids are writing in their book dot 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 and then GOB for the phoneme graphing mapping. Here is an example of what the kids book looks like. And so if you were a second grade teacher, you would be getting four of these. If you're a third grade teacher, four. If you're a kindergarten teacher, uh, three. And first grade is also four books, three books. First grade is three books. So you'll get an A, B, C, D. And then um, every teacher gets the four manuals here. Um, and I think kindergarten has three manuals. So um, lots different than the uh, phonics lesson library that is skill-based. This one is a scope and sequence for tier one. Here's an example of, um, here's an example of what those HTML files look like. And I'm going to pull up that video and I'm going to advance it to 1830. So if you give me a second to do that. The student materials Okay, grade so level, just... the header for the day, phonological awareness, that's oral. Now you have the phonics patterns, the descriptions and the gestures that you'll be using to teach the new skill, along with that description here and showing students the gesture. Once you do that, you're going to be showing students the difference between the target pattern and non on uh, targeted pattern words. So this is short A, that's our pattern. And anything that is not short A is a contrast word. 
and does not fit our pattern. So the teacher will be using these word sorts with the keywords up there so students can recognize and identify the pattern. There are word completion activities with the particular pattern early on, and it shows you where to go in the student workbook so the student can complete it. As they're writing these, they're not just putting those letters in there. They will be saying those sounds as they write them. Here's an example of an early passage, and the students are going to be locating the target pattern words in the passage and underlining them. And then once they underline them, they're going to be reading from their workbook those underlined and highlighted words. When you move to another lesson or day within the lesson, you'll see this presentation file header, but we're gonna go all the way down to day five and show you some of the application activities. We always start with phonological awareness. And here we're jumping and teaching students high frequency words that they may encounter in the passages. There's a place in the workbook for that and the students will then look at a word bank and fill in these high frequency words according to letters. They'll also have some fluency grids of those high frequency words as well as those pattern words. They're listed in the student workbook and students will practice those for one minute. After they do words in isolation, they'll have an opportunity to practice fluency phrases, also found in their workbook. The timer will come up on the presentation page. Sentence dictation, which I will go into, is you're going to orally read a sentence to the student and then they're going to write it on their own. But this is gonna come up on your presentation file so that they can self-correct what they have written. When we get to the passages, there'll be both the passages and comprehension questions. These are oral comprehension questions that will come up on your presentation file, or you can ask them from the book. And then there's also going to be written comprehension questions for both of the passages. There's an optional spelling test, which I will talk about. And these are the answers once you have dictated the words, if you want students to self-correct. So that is a the pre or a sample of what the HTML file looks like. Um, I want to um, talk to you about what you just saw, the PA warm up. Then there's always the teach review phonics pattern. This follows that lesson plan, the writing, the fluency, and reading the passage and that small oral comprehension. We have the additional spelling list and um, you will be using that as they say it's optional, but we are not uh, using the wonders words as we're using this as our spoken sequence. So that's why we are wanting to make sure that you don't skip it because it comes with that dictation. So here are some essential components. You want to make sure that you're pointing and gesturing every time you teach it. You wanna make sure that you have hands-on chip movement to amplify the learning and make it automatic and that you're writing words and sentences and that the kids are interacting in their workbook and reading words and passages aloud. Do not skip. Remember all of these are part of what you've been learning in letters. It's essential for those neural firings and the neural pathway development. We talked about the mats and what that might look like and each portion uh, shows the amount of time that's needed to have you pace yourself for that 30-ish um, minutes. And we talked about also these chips will be moving, what kids will be seeing in their book. They have these little uh, sorting pieces and you're leading them through that with your presentation. If you're a fourth and fifth grade teacher, you will be using the multi-syllable routine cards. We're mapping those to the first six weeks of school. And then after that, um, they will be inserted of where you use them in units two through six of Wonders. They also have HTML files, which are new. And there are also passages available for application in weeks one through six. After that, you use the passages that are in Wonders. So we have about 10 minutes left and I want to um, 
give you, uh, first of all, I want to give you this presentation because in the presentation is also um, in the presentation is also the link here that I provided for you. Um, let's see, right here. So I have provided for you this link to that video. And I will also link in, I have sample lesson plans for kinder, first, second, and third grade. And I'll be linking those in so that you can see sample lessons. So the first grade sample lesson uh, looks like this. Um, and I have a second and a third grade and I'll be linking those in so that I can send those out to you. So I have one question and that is, is this the same similar to what is taught during summer school? And the answer to that is yes, it is the same similar as what was taught in summer school, but it has a different scope and sequence um, than what you saw in summer school. Summer school was selected target skills, and this is a scope and sequence. So anyone wanna open their mic and ask any questions or have a discussion? Michelle says we got a share request. Apparently it's, thank you, Rochelle. Try refreshing. Um, Susan, I have a question. Hi, Carrie, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Um, looking at the 95% um, scope and sequence, it looks like there's 40 um, high frequency words. Is that the case or? not uh are you looking at the the first grade scope and sequence yes so um remember high frequency words are defined differently for different programs and um the high frequency words if they are um in red on the first grade code scope and sequence, they are heart words or words that aren't all decodable. Um, if they are um, black, they are still might be decodable words, but the reason they're calling them high frequency is that students should be able to know them by then. So in other words, look is a high frequency word, but look is a decodable word. So okay. um, that's, so yes, they're, I don't know, I haven't counted them to see if there's 40 in first grade, um, but maybe there are, I don't know. There is about two per week. Okay, it's yes, yep, so that would be, yeah, 41, okay. There's a, it's not quite 41 because it, they end in week 24. So in every scope and sequence, it depends on the grade level. Um, so in first grade, the first week is a review of first grade, or excuse me, kindergarten in first grade. And the last um, five weeks is a preview for second grade. So, um, which is a benefit because then if you get behind for some reason, um, you don't have to fear that you don't finish, even though we'll map it that way because front loading is a good skill. So that's why they end their high frequency words at, at week 24. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Which program will we be using for small group instruction? Which program are you using for small group instruction? We'll be using the 95% or the wonders or the mix. So you can use both. Um, we're not going to be doing a lot of training on small group instruction in year one. In year one in our rollout, you will get um, leveled readers from Wonders. So you can still do what you know best from how to use leveled readers with kids who know how to read close reading and you'll get all those supports. Um, year one, we are focusing mainly on tier one instruction and that's why we won't be talking a lot about it. Um, and you will also be getting, if you're, um, you have your 95% PLL libraries, every school in the district has them. So you can use that still in your tier two or in your skill-based. So you still have your two components, 
because every school has used 95 phonics lesson library. So when you see in your scope and sequence, Johnny doesn't know long E or long silent E long I, then you can pull silent E long I, which is 5.2. I know it's in the five skill, it might not be 0.2, but and have that 0.2 lesson be taught in his, his small group. Does that make sense? Or you can uh, talk with your um, grade level para and have them deliver it. If, the pattern of how you make that would depend on your school. And, but we still, so you, you're still going to use the same components, just your leveled readers would change. Does that make sense, Katie? Does that feel doable? You yes. guys can give me feedback, you know. <laughs> yes, that makes sense and feels doable. Okay. And do we have a, a timeline at all for when we'll be getting our materials? So um, our purchase order um, all went in today and went through purchasing to the companies. Uh, Wonders has um, secured. We are not waiting for the printing on the boat. They told me that they have secured all our materials to ship to Mountain States because we put in, they knew we were going to adopt so early. So the materials are here in the US somewhere. I don't know where that is. And, um, and they'll be shipped to Mountain States and they'll be barcoded. And we're hoping teachers have their, at least their first manual by that last week of school, their first wonders manual. We're hoping that um, the 95% group materials will be on their way. Those are being barcoded by 95%. So you might have those earlier, and I'm not sure what that timeline would be. But I would, again, would hope that you'd have at least the first manual by the end of May. Other questions? Hey, Susan, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, are we going to, are there alphabet cards that come from Wonders that we will display in our room um, as our alphabet cards, just like they had in Reading Street? Yes, you, right. you will get cards for both, both the ones I showed you for 95 for foundations and you also have one for Wonders. Okay, um, my second question is, um, you mentioned that small groups are kind of what we think is best. Are we able to still use the decodable texts or um, uh, PALs in our groups also? So if you're kindergarten or first grade, you can still use PALs, yes. And the 95% group comes with the decodable text and grade in wonders grades um, K through two. Do I have it right, Leanne? Is it just through two or is it three as well? I know K through two comes with the codable text. I can't remember if third grade does or not. Are you saying for second and third grade? Yeah. There's yes. So you'll, and you'll be getting all of that. You get it all. There's only one thing from Wonders we haven't ordered, and that is a teacher read aloud library. We didn't order one for me for each teacher. Instead, we're putting a set in the library that you can check out, but you still get the teacher manual for it. Otherwise, you get everything. And those are called the trade books. Yeah, trade everything. The set that's going to be in your library is a trade book anyway, and it's just one copy per teacher. So we thought it was best to just go in the library and it saved the district a, quite a lot of money because they were 300 and something per teacher. So that was the only thing we didn't order. Otherwise, we got the whole kahuna. So these, um, not speaking about the uh, decodable readers, but the decodable text, the ones that are spiral bound, that are white. Yeah, from... those. those are still approved, yeah. Okay, great, all right. Thank yep. you. Well, any other questions, comments? Okay, I think there was one, the alphabet cards, but we answered that. Well, I've either stunned you all, been super clear, or um, I don't know, but, but your last task is um, to, if you want to show this or talk to your team about it, it will be record, it's recorded and it will be on Canyon's U. 
There's also the bite size PD. And if you want relicensure credit, you fill out this little form here that's linked in this last slide. So that's the way that you, um, if you'll do that for us, that's your um, thank you. I hope I've answered all your questions. Leanne, is there anything I didn't remember to tell anybody? I guess she left the room. Okay, if you have questions or any of your team members have questions, um, it might feel like um, that we're being secretive. We don't mean to be. Um, we're transparent. I will talk to you or send you or clarify for anybody or any teacher. We're training coaches so that they have some things on Tuesday. And uh, this is our first PD, our next one next week, the 24th. Wonders is presenting. So um, send the word out to people. Same Zoom link, same everything. So if you want to see a snippet about Wonders and how they designed their program, it will be all about design. And then we'll be looking at digital platforms and other pieces in the weeks to come. So if you have any questions, I'll hang on for a minute. I'm gonna stop the recording. And um, yeah, if you wanna hang on for your questions, you can.